The Creative Cloud update to Photoshop CS6 brings us to the version that's officially named 13.1, a form of numbering that carries on as if the CS numbers had never interrupted the original flow. There are many enhancements in this update, including some interesting developments in the 3D side of Photoshop. So that's what we'll take a look at here. Here is a basic 3D object. It's a vase that I made in Photoshop, and as you can see, we can spin it around and view it from all angles. Now when we apply texture to this, we can do so by clicking on it, clicking again, and now we get the properties panel with the little texture pop-up. And because this is going to pop up off your screen, I will drag the properties panel up here so we can see it more clearly. When we choose a texture, let's try going for this lumpy cork texture down here. And we can see it applied to our object. Now when we look at the layers panel, we can see that this consists of three different elements. There's the image-based light, which we'll look at a little bit later. There's the diffuse texture, and there's the bump map. Now, the diffuse texture by itself is simply the pattern, just the coloring of the texture, and that's it. If we turn the diffuse off and have a look at the bump, we can now see that this gives the simulation of depth on the surface. If you look at the edge, you can see there isn't actually any depth to it, but it makes it look as if there is when looked from the front. When we put the two together, we get the combination of the color and the depth, and that gives us the full texture. Let's go onto our object and select all of the faces. And now let's see what happens if we change this texture to one such as this marble. Now, the marble, if we look in the Layers panel, has our diffuse texture, but it doesn't have an associated bump map with it, which means it is perfectly smooth, just as marble is. But imagine if we wanted to take this and make it into a lumpier texture, in other words, to give it a more of a three-dimensional quality. At the bottom of the properties panel, where we can see the little normal button, you can click the pop-up and say, generate normals from diffuse. And what that does is it takes the image of the texture and it turns it into much more of a lumpy texture. So it turns it into a bump map on the fly. And that makes it easy to take any texture that we might have drawn and make it three-dimensional. We can also, if we go back to a texture like this wood here, we can choose to generate normals from this as well. And what that does is it makes a new texture generated from the diffuse that's subtly different to the original bump map. So let's put the properties panel away. And let's now have a look at a couple of other changes. If we pick up the light and move it around, you can see the shadow falling behind it, just as you'd expect. Now, in previous versions of Photoshop, when you take that light and you soften the shadow, what you would see would be a very dotty representation of the shadow, at least in the preview. In this update, as we increase the softness, we can see that although we're not seeing a fully soft shadow as we'd expect in real life, we're getting a much, much stronger preview. Let's move this over to the side so we can see it more clearly. And there's the whole shadow. Previously, that wouldn't have looked anything like a real shadow. There's another change when we go ahead and render the scene. So let's go to 3D and Render. Now, in the regular version of CS6, we would see this scene broken up into blocks, and we'd see those blocks moving across the screen, and each one would refine the object a little bit more. In this update, that's all changed. The entire scene is enhanced bit by bit, one step at a time, and if you look at the shadow, you can see that now 
getting finer. You can see it resolving as we go along. Now, what's happened now is the dotted lines that were all around the edge have jumped in just to capture the center part of the image, which means that Photoshop has finished rendering the outside. Now it's just working on this middle portion. And as we leave it, well, we can see that this will uh, carry on to enhance and will carry on getting a much finer and better looking result. Another thing that's been improved is the time remaining, which is now far more accurate than it was before. So this is showing us that we are now 71% of the way through this render and there are currently 23 seconds left. Previously, this would have started off by showing the time remaining in a factor such as days, which is clearly somewhat ridiculous. Uh, but now it's much more accurate and gives a much better impression of how long the remaining time is truly likely to be. And with just three seconds to go, we can see that our finished render is now complete. And we get that nice soft shadow. The other major change is to do with image-based lighting. Now let's take this object and change the texture back to a very plain one so we can see just the object by itself more clearly. Let's click on the Environment tab and you can see everything looks a little bit weird. We've got this grey washed out background and we can see what's going on here by going to the Properties panel and there is the thumbnail showing our image-based lighting. And by default, Photoshop now has this small row of lights. And you can see it's, a, it's two rows of lights in here. But because they're wrapped around the object, they form uh, the inside of a sphere. So what we're getting is the effect of a ring light on this object. And that is now on by default in Photoshop. Previously, that was an optional extra that you could turn on if you wanted it. We can edit this. Let's open it up and let's paste in this view of a room. And when we save that, we can see that is now reflected in our object. And we can drag it around to change the way that it's reflected. And if we like, we can select our object, click it out again, and we can increase the amount of that reflection. And it's entirely up to us how much we have. The point is that image-based lighting is now a default setting in Photoshop, where previously it was an optional extra. Now, there is one significant change in the way that 3D is implemented in this version of Photoshop, and that is you must now have 512 megabytes of VRAM, of video RAM, on your computer. Previously, the 512 megabytes was a recommended setting and it would in fact operate with much less but now that is an absolute cutoff so if you have an older machine if you have a laptop for example you need to check the amount of VRAM that you have on your machine before you upgrade or you may well find that this version of Photoshop simply won't run the 3D features on your computer. Other than that there are some very very nice new features in this update and it's well worth getting.